when we drafted him, we certainly didn't know he was going to become Manu. Uh, so when he came, uh, unfortunately, he, he had a, a bad ankle, so he had to sit for a bit. And I can still remember during that period, Timmy wondering, is this guy as good as you keep saying, Pop? Is this guy really, you know, whatever? He doesn't look like it to me. Well, Timmy, he's hobbling out there, you know, he's, he's got one leg. Uh, so uh, once he started up again, like in January, I believe, uh, it became apparent right away. And when Timmy Duncan's eyebrows raise in amazement, you know it's something. In the beginning, you know, I'm trying to be Mr. Coach, and he's doing things that are, let's say, a little bit too mustardy for me. Mano! As I got to watch him compete more and more, as I saw the results more and more, I realized that uh, he was somebody that I needed to back off of, just let him play, throw in a little advice here and there, gingerly. Follow through, follow through, be brave, be aggressive. But he had to be Manu. And at some point along that progression, when he looked at me and he said, this is what I do, uh, it hit me for some reason. And I realized at that point, it was time to zip it uh, and just enjoy it. Crossover move, oh, Manu Ginobili! He's a very caring individual. No matter what kind of uh, competitiveness he's displaying, he is, in a timeout, going to be talking to the 12th man on the team. He's going to be talking to a teammate who just made a mistake. He's going to be pumping somebody else up. He's going to give everybody a feeling that you never, ever give in. It's always there. So there's always something that he's doing uh, to help the situation be successful. On and off the floor, he was so personable. He loved people, and his passion for the game was uh, exemplary so uh, the memories are are wonderful but will never be matched gracias Manu with all my heart you know one thing I always look back on is uh, that first year uh, his rookie year 2003 when we won the championship bad pass to over gonna try to run it out Keeps coming, layups, good for Ginobili on the steal. You know, I was 37 years old, and, and uh, after our, the parade, we had a celebration. Um, first, you know, the river walk, but then we went to the dome, and, and our fans were there, and we addressed the, the fans at the dome on the stage. And as we were leaving, he pulled me aside, and he goes, hey, I really hope you come back and play next year. And that meant a lot to me. Um, here's this guy who's a, you know, emerging star. Uh, and, and I'm, <laughs> I'm an old man. I'm, I'm like, I, I've had enough, right? I can't, I can barely move anymore. Uh, and he comes and he puts his arm around me. He goes, hey, hey, I, I loved having you as a teammate. I really want you to come back and play. That still makes me feel good. So he knew what to say. So the last game of Manu's career was at Oracle, a game five of our series. And I grabbed Manu on his way off the floor. Maybe subconsciously, I was, uh, telling him the same thing he was telling me, you know, 16 years ago, whatever it was, like, hey, I hope you keep playing just because, you know, I like seeing you out there. Being on the team in 2012 when we made it to the playoffs in the first round against the Utah Jazz, in between games three and four, I believe, in Salt Lake. We went out after a game to grab something to eat and that was when he, he really wanted to get to know me a little bit better and about my upbringing and my culture and my parents' culture. Um, so that one I remember quite vividly as the, maybe the beginning of, the real beginning of the friendship that I was able to um, create with him. It turns into a bonding camaraderie experience that, you know, the dinner has turned into a two, two and a half hour dinner because we don't want to leave, we want to keep talking. When it's all said and done, we'll never forget uh, are those moments, even more so than basketball. How wired his curiosity is made me just sit and watch and learn how to do that as well. 
I tell people this all the time, but you know, I'm so fortunate and so lucky to, to have him as a, a role model so close to me um, during my times here in San Antonio. There was a time uh, we were slowly learning that Manu is like special. You know, this guy can do anything he puts his mind to. I really do believe that. Like if he, even post basketball, he's retired now. I really do think this man can do anything he wants to. Local former world champion, Spurs uh, fan, James Leha. We all used to train with him like in the summer. You know, boxing, it's a lot of hand-eye coordination and you have to work on every day to get. So he once brought over this like suspended bag. That's the bag that's hanging from the ceiling and anchored to the floor and it just bounces. You know, you have to speed back. And we're all swinging, the bag is hitting us and we're missing the bag. And I swear to you, within like two minutes, he was throwing like four or five punch combos, blew James Leha's mind and like just further proved that this guy is just like a freak of nature. He can do whatever he wants. He learned like a hard boxing lesson in less than two minutes. I mean, he can kick a basketball three quarter court into the basket he can catch bats out of midair. I mean, <laughs> the guy can do anything. And, that's what made him special because he wasn't afraid to try anything and um, he was just good at everything. I met Manu for the first time playing against you know, New Zealand, Argentina, um, way, way, way back when. And then obviously I was lucky enough to be on a Spurs team with Manu. So there's a lot of off-court memories that I think you know, you know, I, I will really cherish. From a teammate perspective, yeah, unless you really knew him well, unless you were on the team playing and traveling in those circles, you didn't realize the sort of camaraderie that he sparked. He was a catalyst for the team dinners and the coffee breaks and, uh, and a lot of the practical jokes that were played. I think there's a lot of funny moments there, whether he was the bunt of the joke or, or whether he was the instigator. And it worked both ways. And, and he loved it. He loved the, the banter and the camaraderie back and forth. Um, with his teammates and with his coaching stuff. I mean, there was never a dull moment with, with Manu around. You know, he kept us all on our toes, and uh, I think those are the memories that were, that were pretty special. Me and Manu, when I got there in San Antonio, you know, we started to go to dinner together, and then we invite Perry Mills, we invite Boris Diao, and that group just, you know, we have our guests uh, once in a while. And it became uh, something that we do every road trip, every game away. We're gonna go somewhere, we're gonna have dinner, or before the game, the lunch before the game. So it was something that we enjoy. We even made a photo book with all those dinners and lunch. And Mano uh, did a special thing, that is he wrote down in every dinner what was the subject that we talked about that night. We had those dinners for like four or five years and, and go back and you know, see all those pictures with the subjects, what we talk about those nights. So fun stuff that we always gonna, you know, take with us. Gracias Manu. 